Hello everybody. Um, we're now talking about the equilibrium relation or the phase diagram first. Um, this is the, the topic of this video. Um, to to uh, be able to do the calculations and to calculate the um, amount of, of uh, uh, solute extracted by the solvent and doing all this stuff, you need to know uh, the basics of the phase diagram that we are using. Um, and to know the the type of the phase diagram that we use, we need to know why we use it. Uh, we use uh, a phase diagram that can handle three components um, or show the compositions of a mixture of three components, which is the component that we need to extract and the um, component that it is mixed with and the extracting liquid or the solvent that we, using, that we are using to do the extraction. And that's why we use a three component phase diagram or the ternary diagram. Um, and this is uh, kind of more difficult to deal with. Um, it just needs to some practice so that you get more familiar with it and to know how uh, to uh, do what you want to do using this diagram. So the uh, phase diagram is triangular um, and it looks like this. Um, each corner represents a pure component so this corner represents a pure C this is pure A and this is pure B so it's 100% B, 100% A, 100% C each one of the sides of the triangle represents a binary system or a two component um, system so here it is a mixture of A and C with different compositions from 100% A to 100% C so as you go up you um, have higher percent of C and lower percent of A the same here this is a mixture of B and C this is a mixture of A and B um, any point in the triangle is a three component system it is a mixture of three components with different compositions based on the location um, on the triangle and that's imp it's important to know how uh, the location of the point represents the composition um, to to know that we need to uh, first understand how this triangle is uh, divided. So it it can be divided into uh, parts or, or sections with different percents of C. So we have here lines that are parallel to the AB uh, line, um, and as you go up, you have. So we said this is zero percent C, and then you go up, it's ten percent, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty up to 100% C uh, and as you go up the percent of C increases uh, and this is the locus of 10% C so any point on this line represents a 10% C mixture with different A and B compositions but it is a constant um, C uh, composition line uh, the same go, um, takes place here when you go with the B uh, so this is 0% B, 10%, 20, 30, 40, up to 100% B, and the same for A. So you can now um, divide this into um, into parts, and uh, depending on the location of the point that you put on the triangle uh, or, or on the diagram, you can tell where ex or what exactly is the composition of this mixture. So let's say we have a mixture that is in this point. So this point is uh, passes by three lines, uh, this, this, and this, uh, and we can easily tell what is the composition. So if we first talk about the B percentage, so we know this is zero percent, ten percent B, twenty percent B. So I know it is twenty percent. I know now it is twenty percent B, and then this is zero percent A, ten, twenty, thirty percent A. So I know that it is thirty percent A, and of course the balance would be C. So it's gonna be fifty percent C, or you can go this this way. It's zero percent C, ten, twenty, thirty, forty and 50% C. So I now know the composition of this mixture. The same for a point on the a, B, a, a, C line. So it's 60% A and 40% C. So this is the composition of this, um, of this point. And now comes one more point which is pretty important and it's very, very uh, important for us to uh, 
understand well because it is the base of all the graphical calculations we are going to do in uh, the future uh, regarding the liquid liquid extraction let's say you have a mixture of two components or two of two uh, components uh, and another mixture of two components uh, this is like n and m you know that m is 30 per 30 kilograms and n is 20 kilograms you know the composition of um, M is 30% A, 70% C. The composition of N is 80% A and 20% C. So I, I put these two points on the uh, diagram. And you can tell from these two points that you know their compositions, but you do not know any information from the diagram about the amounts. Um, nothing here tells you that this is 30 kilograms or this is 20 kilograms. You cannot tell. And now you are mixing these two uh, streams or two mixtures and want to know the composition of the output or, or the, the, uh, the output mixture, uh, which is called O. Uh, and this is going to be the sum of these two. So you can, by simple calculations, you can tell that mass of O is going to be the mass of N plus mass of N. It's going to be 50 kilograms. Um, and you can intuitively tell that the point... O is going to be somewhere in between the point M and the point N. So this is going to be the locus of the um, point O. But you don't know, is it is it here close to M or close to N or in the middle? You do not know. But And, and, this, and uh, to be able to do this, you need to use what we call the lever arm principle. And this is a graphical way that we use to do the graphical mixing or graphical separation, depending on what you want to do. Um, and to do this, uh, you can you can intuitively think of this. Uh, if you have M like 100 kilograms and N is 1 kilogram, so you would expect that the composition of the output would be very, very close to the composition of M because it is the dominant uh, input. Uh, it's more dominant than N, so the, the impact of the composition of M will be more obvious on the output. So you'd expect the output to be somewhere close to this. And the, the same, uh, if, if it goes other way, if n is more, then the, the output would be somewhere close to n. Um, and from this, we were able to tell that the ratio between the distances is proportional to the ratios of the distance, of, of the amounts. So let's say I have 0 0.0 somewhere here, and I want to know exactly how to get its location. I would uh, split the line into, or uh, O would split the line into two um, uh, parts, A and B. And from the lever arm principle, it tells us that N over uh, M over N, M over N equals B over A. Because as M gets bigger, the O would, would get closer, and then this distance gets bigger. So this distance is proportional to the amount of M, and this distance uh, A is proportional to the amount of N. That's why we call it the lever arm. So it's it's proportional to the, the far part of, or far arm of the line. Um, so M is uh, M over N equals B over A, or M over O is going to be B over the whole distance between the two lines. So it gives you some flexibility to use the information that are easier for you. Uh, I would personally prefer to use this because you know A plus B it's already a known distance so you have only one variable here given that you know the amount of M and, N, and O. Um, so this this would, would be easier in, in some cases of course it's not every, every time. Um, and from this you would find that the output is 50% A and 50% C. Okay. If you if you want to do this um, by doing calculations, you can, you can you can definitely do that. You can tell that you have um, nine kilograms of A and twenty one kilograms of C, and you have here uh, sixteen kilograms of A and four kilograms of C. You can add them, uh, the C and add the A, and divide total A over the total mass and total C over the total mass. But it's gonna be more time consuming than doing it graphically. You did here like four or five calculations, you just do only one calculation here and, and you're done. Um, you can do one more uh, uh, exercise by mixing these two uh, mixtures M and N 
uh, 50 kilograms and 30 kilograms and this is where M and N are located on the graph again you do not know any information about the amounts you just know the compositions and when you do the mixing you know it's gonna be somewhere between M and N and you know that it is gonna be um, here I know the amount of, uh, of, of O which is the the sum is gonna be 80 kilograms and I split this into A and B and I know the mass of uh, O equals 80 kilograms and B over A B over A equals B is here so it's gonna be M over N so it's gonna be 5 over uh, no it's gonna be 5 over 3 I'm, I think I did a mistake here this should be 3 um, this, this should be 3 uh, I'm sorry um, I'm gonna fix it in the future uh, anyways so the the composition of O is gonna be 27.5% um, A 27.5% B and 45% C um, as, as you see from from this point on the graph um, so it's it's pretty simple and straightforward uh, one other thing that uh, we we do with the lever arm principle is when you do the uh, removal or um, you're extracting something from a mixture or removing part of the mixture out of it um, and we, we use it a lot in in our work with the uh, liquid liquid extraction so let's say we have M it's 85 kilogram with this composition and N is 20 kilogram with this composition and we need to um, remove the N from M uh, so in this case the output is not gonna be in between uh, however, the output is going to be on the same line, but it's not in between. It would be on the other side of M. So you draw a straight line. I, I can I can tell how much uh, is the amount of, of O, and I I would put I would find it somewhere on the other side of N. And and this is kind of kind of logical because you're removing uh, a mixture of this composition, so it, the the output is going to be. Uh, it's not going to be reached in this in this composition as it was in the beginning so it's going to be more towards the other side which is richer in other parts of the mixture um, and then you can apply the lever arm principle as we did before you can split it into a and b or put a plus b equals c and then tell that um, b over a is going to be n over o or you can say that B over C is gonna be N over M and in this case you know um, you know N and M and you know uh, B uh, oh you know A I'm sorry so so in, in this case this is gonna be easier than using this uh, it's not like in, in, in the mixing uh, that we did before so the output from the graph would be something like 36% A, 13% B and 51% C however if you do the calculations um, using the numbers then you would find that the exact composition is going to be 36.15, 13.08 and 50.77 and this is one drawback of using the graphical solution is that you do not get as accurate results as you get from these calculations and that's why it's it's not uh, the the most accurate way to do this uh, but it's it's good enough in in a lot of cases to use the graphical solution so i'll stop here and in the next video we'll see how the equilibrium curves look like and how we can deal with them um, and we will see you in the next video inshallah goodbye